The meeting Abs. comes to order. Recording. Okay, uh, welcome to the May 23 uh, Rec Commission meeting. Um, we have present today Yusuf uh, Fidel, Matt Kane, Carolyn Mailer, Jonas Cox, and myself, Ray Hart. Um, uh, we have a few things on our agenda today that we wanted to take care of. The first, uh, first up, we can go through the housekeeping of introducing Jonas Cox. Jonas is, uh, this is his first official uh, uh, commission meeting with us. He is, uh, he was with us last week, uh, no, last month, uh, as he observed and had not yet been sworn in, but we're excited to have him on camera for the entire meeting here. We're excited to have him come to us. His, like many of the commission here, you all are, have a variety of different um, uh, angles into recreation. Uh, Jonas was first introduced to me through his soccer connections in the soccer world. Uh, he is, uh, you know, uh, like the rest of us, he also has other interests, but he did uh, thankfully put his name in when we had empty spaces here. So I want to give Jonas an opportunity to just introduce himself for uh, a couple minutes here. Uh, let us know about yourself, about what your interests may be, and then we'll get going from there. Sure. Um, Jonas Cox. Um, I've lived in Amherst uh, about uh, let's see, eight years. And um, as you mentioned, Ray, I've been pretty involved with the local soccer scene. I was a uh, JVB coach um, for one of the years. It's the junior varsity boys um, B team. And then um, I also have done organized the summer soccer, which is pretty challenging as Ray can attest. Um, it's like finding um, lots, lots of var variables. And so one of my interests is um, the availability, availability, availability of the fields. Uh, which is one, which is one of the aspects of uh, of organizing the summer soccer. Um, generally, um, I've been interested in sports since a, a young age, um, and um, I know Matt and Andrew from um, some some running exploits. Um, there we are, <laughs> the sloths, and feeling it a lot these days. Um, so um, yeah, just excited to 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 be on the committee and and uh, just be more tapped into what's happening locally. Great. We're excited. We are excited to have you. Um, uh, Jonas mentioned about sort of summer soccer and field stuff, one place where I know I, I don't want to give him his cause for being here, but one place where I know uh, our paths overlapped was in it's a finite resource for us as fields. One of the reasons why Jonas's name was put forward to me is because he does have a passion and interest in trying to figure out um, how to how to how to schedule uh, events, how to schedule uh, uh, field access. And so, I know that the commission in the past has been interested in in things like that. And uh, if that was part of uh, his mission, then we certainly would welcome that. But there's there's a lot of places where where we we are looking for some impact. Um, and so welcome, Sanjay. We see uh, has shown up here. We are now uh, Andy at six o'clock is pretty early for Andy. Sometimes sometimes he we ran into that before, so he may be popping in here pretty soon. Um, we can move forward. I probably we probably should have checked and seen if Matt is willing to do the minutes first before we introduce Jonas. But uh, uh, Matt, are you willing to do the May minutes? Uh, sure. I actually already was doing. Them. Okay, that's what I figured. I uh, we didn't officially ask that question, but uh, uh, and then I think the next thing we need to do is to ask about approving the April minutes. Uh, Carolyn, I'll let you take that. Uh, does anyone have any comments? And did everyone get a chance to see the April minutes? Okay, and any changes that haven't already been sent in or any more comments about it? No one's more public than voters. I didn't receive any comments. Okay. Uh, 
All right, then I move to approve the April 23, the April 19, 23, April 24th, 23 minutes. Uh, second? Second from Yosef. And all in favor? Okay. All right. Motion carried. Minutes are approved. Thanks. If that did come to me. I can get that to Mary to have those posted here uh, tomorrow. Ready for everybody. Okay, um, so we are right on schedule then. Uh, we are starting off, uh, you guys know it, we've got pickleball on the agenda here. There's a pretty good chance that this is the last time we have to have this as the big intro portion here because we are. I think we're at a stage right now where a commission action may be the thing that triggers the next piece of action. That's an exciting piece for us. I am going to bring out of the attendees, uh, I'm going to bring in Amy Rizeki and David Zomek uh, uh, so we can go over the update on what we're looking at for pickleball. As they're being elevated, uh, Kelly and I and Dave were over at our new site looking at uh, Kiwanis and had a chance to go and walk the, the space that I shared with you. Um, I shared all of you, I shared with all of you all the sort of rough map of where those courts would be. There's been a couple of very slight uh, uh, proposed alternatives at that same site, but those that is essentially the space that we are looking at uh, in terms of making that that uh, pickleball thing happen for us. So um, that, Carolyn, do you want to, uh, do you want to uh, start this off? Uh, I'd like to ask, make sure everyone received the kind of the little write up. Um, that's basically what we're doing tonight. If that sounds like the right thing to Dave and Amy, I, I think everyone, uh, the, those of us who worked on that, felt like it was going to be enough to get us to the next step. So has everyone everyone read that? You you know what I'm talking about? No. Um, the there, there was a statement we sent out about why we are focusing on Zomek Field right now, what the advantages of it are, what, what the reason we moved to that as a primary target. Um, and one thing I'll add is that of the working group, the pickleball working group, I guess I'll call it informally, all stood together there for quite a while. Um, Dave and, and Amy's assistant, Jason, gave us a good description, gave us that map. Um, and by the end of our meeting, I think we were all in agreement that that was the best place to go and the one we could get done most quickly and on budget. So that's where we are and that's what we need to decide about. But I think uh, Amy and Dave have more to say tonight because there they are. What else do we need to know or what do you want to share with us? Well, I love these intros. I will just say Ray's intros are the best. When you're joining a rec commission meeting, they're just, it feels so official. It's awesome. Um, <laughs> but no, um, Carolyn, just to clarify, I think you said Zomek Field. And, oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> Isn't everything in sure. this town? I, I, I want to make sure it. one. One, we're not putting pickleball courts at Zomek Field. And two, right. I don't want Kiwanis Park to be Zomek Field. So, you know, uh, but anyway, take it back. I think we all know the field off of Stanley Street. So, yeah, um, I'm not sure if the commission um, has seen the rendering ray of. I'm you know, sharing screen now. Oh, yeah. So maybe we do that and then Amy and I can kind of comment. But really quickly, um, you know, you all, I think you all know we've we've really looked hard at a number of sites all over town. We think, as Carolyn indicated, we think there's a space at Kiwanis Park that is not a high value space, that it is flat, dry. It's not going to be a walk in the park. I mean, we've already been down there since we had the meeting out there. Jason Skeels, who's our town engineer, he's He's been wonderful and great to work with. And he and Aaron Jock, our wetlands administrator, met down there last week. Um, we did some measuring. We talked about how the permitting for this could go because there is an intermittent stream to the, to the west. There's wetlands, but we think either in this orientation or, you know, again, I don't want to lock in this orientation. Basically, 
We're trying to build pickleball courts, as many as we can fit and as many as we can afford for 120,000, and we'll talk about the numbers in a minute, in that unused space to the west of the softball field and the multi-purpose field at Kiwanis Park. We have existing parking there. We realize there's no, there's no uh, permanent bathrooms there. Again, that's something we'd have to look at in the future. It's come up many times before we even talked about pickleball there because uh, Kiwanis is used so extensively throughout the year. But that's the general location and I'll, I'll turn it over to Amy if she wants to add anything, but we would, if you were in favor, we would get going with, with a, a fuller design and permitting to get this done. I think you hit all the important notes. Uh, you know, obviously there might be little tweaks here and there as we explore permitting and uh, that sort of thing. But you know, generally this is what we're looking at, and um, yeah, the most the most feasible option to get this moving forward as quickly as possible. The two trees would come down there. That's that's fine. Our tree warden has already looked at them. They're they're quite old and they're in kind of a decayed state. One is full of poison ivy, so we don't think those, losing those would be any great loss. We'll try to pick up some trees around the edges, particularly on the west side there for shade. Um, again, the budget's going to be tight. We don't know exactly how much we can um, get of this built for $120,000, but the hope would be to try to fold it into an existing contract, paving contract that we have with some larger projects throughout town. So we'd hopefully get some economies of scale there. Um, so happy to take questions, Amy and I. Uh, shoot away if you got questions. And so it should be noted that the, uh, the one that we have here, this is a map that it's a slight Adjustment. This was some of the engineering adjustments that were done in the conversation between Jason and Aaron, sort of planning how to get this situated as logistically sound as possible. Um, but it's but it's essentially the same place. You see the the softball line here. This is all space that we essentially don't use. The the, the one that I shared before uh, did not overlap with these two trees here, but that is. You know, the, those trees have to come down in order to make this work, in order to flatten that little bit of a hill over here, but in order to flatten that that land and get the, the trees and the roots out of there. I have like, two questions. Uh, Ray, are, are you done? Ray, yes, sorry. definitely. Um, one is, Dave, you said we are ready to lock in this spot, this design, this um, location, or we are not? I didn't, I missed a word, maybe. No, we are, Okay. but in design, when Amy and Jason and Aaron and I do this, we just, you know, we don't want to have to come back to you. If the pickleball courts were oriented like this, Jason actually laid out two different scenarios. One is like this with the courts, that's basically north-south, and then he turned them, again, staying clear of the softball foul line, but he turned them so that they're facing east-west. What I'm saying is, you know, we're, we're gonna have to go through CONCOM permitting to get these done. I just don't want to say they're gonna be exactly like this drawing. We, we need, they're gonna be, we're gonna, we're gonna try to permit them, design them and permit them and build them out of the, the softball field and the multipurpose field somewhere in that area. We have two hands up here. I will say that, uh, as we think about framing a motion here that uh, the commission can think about uh, uh, to essentially uh, essentially trust the engineering group that the, of the options that have been presented here that that this is the this is the space we'll be using and the adjustments that need to be made in order to meet code. Um, and Ray, if I could, the key thing here is we are extremely cognizant of the fact that we don't want to compromise the softball field or the multipurpose field that is outlined in this image here. Let's look at some hands. Uh, Matt was up first. Yeah, thanks, Dave. Um, 
Yeah. So the general proposal is, uh, I think, perfect. Um, my questions probably are at the detail level, um, which may or may not be relevant. So um, those are one foot contour lines, I guess. Or, or, or I guess my question is, what what was the uh, the reason to to put the the them close up to the parking lot versus further south? Further south, uh, Amy, you might. I mean, yeah. I have a Further south, yeah, so in. you would you wouldn't require as much excavation of that little hill, and also um, the trees would still be there, maybe. Yeah, I think a lot of the thought of that was, you know, we're trying to not only get as far as we can from the river because that makes things easier to permit, um, which I understand south you get a little further, um, but then also making sure that you make it handicap accessible, and so having that connection, you see that little sidewalk from the parking lot to bring it in. And the further away you go, just the longer that becomes. So more like you still you still have to pave a strip to make it handicap accessible to access it. Right. So you, you feel that that the the extra excavation plus the taking down of the trees is less than the additional paving that would be required if it was further south. That was that was the engineer's opinion, yeah. I see. I, I would just add that we also wanted to separate the uses as much as possible. So the farther south you go with the courts, if you have active pickleball games going on there and you have a softball game going on, you're kind of mixing, you know, the farther south you go, you're you're getting much closer to the diamond, to the current softball diamond. And I think the thing yeah. was why it just doesn't make sense to kind of mix those and kind of crowd the softball folks on the side of the softball field and the benches and all that. And so all right. on, that on that also, the like this is one, it, it was originally when we first talked about it, it was pushed up to the west here, almost in a line with the parking lot. And even this one, it, my first thought about it was you're getting closer to that softball line and not that it's an overlap that is, that's a, that, that's impossible to, to manage, but now you're getting closer to that softball foul line that if there is overlapping activity, then you, you know, it's, it's encroaching closer. Um, but, but that space in the West that they're trying to push away from you know, to, to manage that, I think that's, that's the essential piece of it. Jonas. That's falling, falling right onto what you just said, right? The, I guess West, it, it can't be nudged West basically left of the screen um, because that encroaches on the softball. I guess I, I don't understand the orientation. Yeah, so we, that's what I was alluding to earlier, Jonas, is, yeah. you know, we're going to try to squeeze it in as best we can. We're, we're constrained because we need to be 50 feet away from the wetland line, and we haven't actually um, delineated that wetland over to the west. So again, this is somewhat still conceptual, we'll try to have it be as far west as we can, but we can't We can't be right up against the property line in yellow there beyond the 169. You know, the closer we get over there, we infringe on the 50 foot and then the, the Conservation Commission can basically either say no or, or put much more difficult conditions on the project. Yeah. You know, essentially this is, you know, this is a, remove the trees, grade the site, uh, 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 put down a sub base and then put down, you know, like the basketball courts at Mill River, basically pave it, line it, fence it, and, you know, with a, with a low fence. So it's, the good news here is, you know, we can do this relatively inexpensively, fingers crossed. And it's, it's not like putting in a pool or, you know, or something of, uh, or, a, or, a, a you know, a, a building per se. So, but that's the reason we had to nudge it to the east is the wetlands. Now, again, we have another drawing of this that Jason did that switched the orientation. So that's what I'm asking for is a little flexibility when push comes to shove here. I don't know if Ray has that one. You want too. me to pull that one up? I can yeah, pull that up. Show the group that yeah. one because we, we may end up with that one. You know, I'm just saying we can't lock it in at this point. We're going to stay, you know, out of that softball field and the multi-purpose field. Let me just pull that up. So 
So this is the other one. Yeah, there we go. Mm -hmm. So this is the other variation from you this week for the for this meeting. Um, uh, and so this has been just been uh, rotated. So it goes, the three courts are moving up that softball line. And you can see that the, the uh, access walkway is extended all the way down to frame the courts on the west side of them. And again, you know, Go ahead. keeping options open, this is just um, in case we run into, you know, um, bumps in the road with the commission. But the good thing about having Jason and Aaron work together early in the design process is Aaron can, although she cannot decide for the commission, she can advise us on, on uh, the setbacks and, and design elements. Um, for instance, you know, this is like paving a driveway. The water needs to go somewhere. We have to make sure the water doesn't go into the softball field and or the multipurpose field and create issues there. But we also have to account for the water to make sure it's not going, um, you know, uh, at a velocity or a volume off the site into the wetland. So the good news is this won't be treated asphalt. There's going to be no sand or salt on it. It's not like a road or even a uh, a parking lot where we sand or salt anything. So it'll be clean water, if you will. When it rains, it you know Jason will design it in such a way that it drains to the south and then to the west so that the water goes over toward the wetland where it wants to go. Carolyn's hand is up. Uh, this is probably a question for Amy. Is there an orientation that's ideal for players uh, with regard to sun being in their eyes? And what, what is that? I believe there is, and I don't know it off the top of my head, to be honest, but I feel like that conversation came up at Mill River. Do you remember, Ray? Yeah, the Mill River, one of the reasons why we like Mill River was because it is kind of in a little tree bowl over there and yeah. doesn't really affect as much. Here, uh, uh, you want to be worried about sunset. You don't want to have people hitting into directly into the sun. This, this uh, orientation here you know, would be the, the East players, the, the players on the East would be looking at, at sundown right into the sun. And so... So one of the reasons why this, that's a, I think that's a, a fair observation here is that you could lose prime time if it's an east-west orientation because you're looking into the sun. And that's true in the morning too for the other yes. side, yes. which is even harder to do. Yeah. 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 So that was going to be my my comment. And I remember from the Western Samson pre um, presentation on the fields at the high school, um, they were definitely recommending the the things be oriented north south for, for the sun reason the reason mm -hmm. of the, the sun and uh the other tennis courts well the tennis courts at mill river and the middle school are both oriented north south so i think it's preferable um mm -hmm. if at all possible to orient the courts north south yeah that's why we led with the the preferred is north south yeah i think it's important it's a fair question matt kane again yeah that was that was what i was going to say all right, Sanjay. Thanks, Ray. A um, couple of things. Uh, so I agree about the orientation of the courts, right? And Dave, I understand you want to get kind of approval from the commission, but also retain some flexibility, right? As you work with conservation and engineering and DPW, et cetera. Um, I'm a little, I have some concern as a member of the commission that we vote to approve and then the courts may wind up in this orientation for some reason. And now the pickleballers are mad at the commission because, <laughs> oh, well, like the commission, you like you let them build courts east west. Right. So I, I don't know if there's a way for us to be really clear about what exactly we're approving if we if we vote to approve. I think I think I can. I mean, I. I think we're fine with the you know, with the north-south orientation, you know, I just wanted to show you that we've looked at different sure. options here. Um, you know, we're going to, we're going to price this out. We're honestly, we'd like to get three courts. I'm not sure we're going to be able to afford three courts. That's the ideal. But yeah. when we cost this out and then bid it out, 
we'll just have to see. So we'd like three courts, but can Amy or I guarantee we're gonna have three courts? I, I don't think I could say that definitively today, but our goal is three courts and we yep. really wanna design for three courts. Maybe we can afford two courts now and we design it and, and we can add a third court later in the east and the north south orientation. So that's all. I was just looking for a little flexibility and to show you that we had looked at different options here, but we're fine, I think, with the north south. Amy, would you agree? Yeah. And I guess the other thing that I was going to throw out was um, I don't know if, you know, engineering and and um and Aaron have looked at it, but you know, if if it's you know, we want to make sure north south. I wonder even if, you know, you look at this orientation and it can be like a two in one. So we can still kind of snug it further away, but they can all be oriented north south. Um, now, I don't know, you know, paving wise, if that adds more because it's not square, instead it's an L shaped, but there might be ways to kind of split the difference with getting things further away from the stream, but still getting everything facing north south. Yeah. Maybe we could go back to the preferred one because I think we've heard you <laughs> loud and clear. Yeah. <laughs> we get it. That's our preferred as well. Or yeah. So, so uh, as we as Ray, we think about the motion, right? Oh, sorry, Sanjay, go, Sanjay, um, go ahead. If, if it's all right, I have a couple more. I did see Jonas's hand go up, but then down. So maybe that got resolved. Okay. Um, uh, what, what else was I going to ask? Oh. What is the process by which uh, abutters to the parkland? When do they do they when do they get called into this process to be made aware of the plans and be able to provide comment and so on? Ray, I don't know if you want to take that or I'm happy to. Please do, David. Um, so yeah, we talked a little bit about that on that as as Ray uh, puts that preferred option back up so we can be staring at it, but um. Yeah, we talked a little bit about that on the site visit when we were out there. Um, I think it's incumbent upon us to kind of go door to door. Um, it's not enough anymore to, there There will be a required abutter yeah. notification through right. the CONCOM, but I think we have to be proactive. And we've got to do, we, I say we, the town, um, I'm going to lean on Ray, and we need to go door to door, knock on some doors out there. If the commission has any advice or guidance or wanted to help with that, you know, I think we would be open to that, but I think we need to go door to door and go up and down Stanley Street, particularly those people who live within earshot of what we think is, you know, the 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 whacking of the ball out there for pickleball, because that, if you, you know, if you read online, that is what is the concern, right? Um, we yep. never kind of crossed that bridge up at Mill River, but there, frankly, are more closer abutters to Mill River yep. than there are here. But there are a couple of people just to the north and west on Stanley Street who uh, I'm particularly, you know, concerned about um, and how they will view this. Um, but yeah, we plan to kind of go door to door and get the word out. If we need to do kind of a neighborhood meeting, we could also do that. Thanks. Um Thank you for investigating other sites and preserving the tennis courts at Mill River. I think mm -hmm. that's great. And it is in line with, you know, something I said at an earlier meeting where it's great when the town can add recreational opportunities without taking away from another group of users. So much appreciated. <laughs> um, and then, and then my final question, if I might, uh, sort of Matt raised the question of the or maybe it was Jonas about the cost exchange, right, between the excavation and the trees and the additional paving. And I do wonder, does the, are the existing trees given any value, inherent value in the cost assessment? Um, I'll weigh in on this if you want, Amy. So I think what we would have to do is talk to the superintendent, talk to Guilford Mooring about, you know, oftentimes in these projects, you know, we we have the ability um, as as time permits and, and projects permit to have, have the DPW staff help with some of these costs. These trees are really huge trees. As I said, they are in decline. Um, Alan Snow, our tree warden, has already looked at them and um, they are not public shade trees, so they do not have to go through a hearing. Um, um, but 
I think if Guilford is agreeable um, and we will talk with him, there would likely be the ability of, of DPW to contribute at no extra cost, the tree removal and I can't commit, we can't commit tonight to all of the site work, but some of the site work that happened at Mill River or the basketball courts. So the town often does this, you know, and, and it's kind of invisible. And then we bid out, <laughs> excuse me, we bid out the larger pieces to try to save money for the project. So we're willing to talk with Guilford about the trees and some of the site excavation. And then we would we would decide at what point in the in the um, construction do we bid out the rest of it, and and that's a little bit um, that's a squishy line right now because we haven't had that conversation with Guilford, so I I don't want to commit to you all, but I I the conversation is there, so we'll we'll have it with Guilford. Um, Thanks, Dave. My yeah. my question though was really more not about the costs of removal or site work, but the fact that these these big old trees whether in decline or not they actually have an inherent value right in terms of the services they provide to the community shade um you know cleaning of the air etc and whether when the town um, sort of assesses decisions to remove trees like this is is that value quantified and part of the calculation um and regarding the sort of determination from alan whom I think I think you know, Alan and I know each other pretty well. Um, so dec decline is in the eye of the beholder, and I recognize that Alan is a tree professional, right? Um, but it's also true from some of the reading that I've done that, in fact, these big trees have their greatest value, in a sense, during the latter part of their lives, right? When they are big and and so on. So I I'm not saying I'm going to vote against the pickleball courts because of the trees. But I am interested in a more general sense about the process that the town uses in assessing the value of of large trees that exist on our public lands when decisions are made to take them down. Well, it's a great it's a great question. I can say I don't know. Amy can help me out here, but I think in a situation like this, for two trees, I, I I'm honestly not involved in that kind of assessment of the carbon sequestration of these two trees. Um, it's, it's an interesting question. I honestly, um, these are resource, you know, these are resource decisions. I mean, do we, you know, let me back up. I do not believe keeping those trees and putting the pickleball courts where they are makes any sense from a construction and design standpoint. Um, I'll be honest, the, the trees at Mill River near the, near the tennis courts, uh, although they offer shade, they create a lot of problems for those tennis courts yep. um, in terms of mold and um, accumulated leaves and, and whatnot. So it's not a great... Um, relationship to have the trees right next to these kinds of courts. Um, and this was the one place we could find where, you know, um, it made sense to put them. But we could certainly ask Alan to to do a take a little look at that and, and see. But it's a good question, Sanjay. I, I don't know, Amy, I, I'll just chime in a little bit. I think it's a great question, Sanjay. And certainly I, I'm not going to speak for, you know, for Alan, but I know in conversations of all of this, um, you know, two things. One, Alan typically, you know, he doesn't take a tree down without making sure that it's replaced somewhere. And I understand that that's a new tree, not an old tree. Um, but certainly there, you know, he does at least try to make sure that they are replaced. Um, at this site, I feel like he was talking about maybe lining, like putting some trees in along the driveway um, mm -hmm. or something like that. And so again, like that could be part of what your recommendation is just to ensure that that happens. Um, but I think that that's something that's already part of the discussion as Alan's looking at this is, you know, not just taking down trees, but making sure that we continue to have something to provide some shade out there um, and also to have, um, you know, to not just be removing trees. We want a net gain or a net equal, at least. And I would just add to be thinking about 
you know, those trees that we plant, what does this area look like in 20 years when those trees are more mature than, you know, a two, two, two inch caliber or three inch caliber tree? What do they look like 10 years, 20 years down the road? And that's, you know, that's what Alan does. Um, Thank you. Marilyn. A um, couple things. First, I really like those colors. Can we get those colors? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's the, Blue that's the color of the uh, yeah, like at the basketball courts at Mill River. Those colors, uh -huh. right? Yes, they just, are. Just to the side. More. Um, I'm still unclear about this next step. If we, uh, you know, if we really do, I know we want to reach some kind of agreement tonight, so you guys can move on. But I hear that everyone's wondering. I think that. You know, if things change, what does that mean? Does that mean we have to start, we have to back up and do it again? Does it mean it, it's off the table? Um, so how do we get a statement to vote on that is flexible, um, maybe contains some contingencies, some recommendations, and does that stand up when it comes right down to we need contracts and that kind of thing? I just don't know the process. Say that in crafting, I don't think it's my place to come up with a motion for the commission. But I, when crafting the the motion, you should be uh, particular about about framing in a way that allows you the authority you want to have, um, you want to maintain. If you want to craft a motion that says it has to be a north south orientation, if you want to craft a motion that says that we are putting we're we're going to hand over with 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 uh, uh, restrictions, we're going to hand over the the spirit of these these proposed designs to the engineering team, the DPW and the engineers, uh, and spell out what what control you want to have on the second piece of that. Then I would uh, I would encourage you to think of a motion that that allows you the most peace with that, and then you can vote on that. But if you just say who here says Kiwanis, and we raise our hands to vote on that, then the question is, what are you authorizing? That's right. Um, and what is the safest way to go here? What can we get done to keep the process moving without tying anyone's hands, particularly? Yes, Dave, <laughs> you would I mean, know. I'm generally in agreement with, with Ray. I, I don't I'm not, I'm not overthinking this. I think if the commission votes, you know, um, you know, to, to, can I just, I'll just shoot from the hip here, but if the commission votes to have, you know, the town staff, um, you know, proceed with the design and construction of pickleball courts at Kiwanis Park in a north-south orientation, you know, and, and you could put some other caveats in there, you know, with a goal of of two to three courts, um, as presented in the plan on 522-23, and the staff commits to regular reports throughout the, the process. Um, and you could put in a few more other caveats if you'd like, but, uh, but I think that's all the framing we need. Amy, does that work, do you think? Yeah. Um, and we, so we mentioned, yeah, go ahead. We mentioned a minute ago, replacement trees being in there somewhere. Is that, sure. is this the place for that? Okay. Sure. Yeah. So know. does anyone have anything? To, yeah. I don't know if we need to have like regular updates. I think we should leave the people that know what they're doing, the flexibility to do what they got to do and let us know if anything major changes along the way. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, Ray, you know, you all meet monthly. Ray could give you a five-minute update, right. not a 30-minute update right. as needed. Okay. The one piece, Carolyn, the, that we haven't talked much about is the dollars and cents. So we are not sure mm -hmm. at this point how far 120000 will go, given right. today's prices compared to, you know, a couple of years ago when this was approved by CPAC and the council. So again, we that would be part of Ray or staff coming back to you and giving you a report. I did mention on the site visit that, you know, the town staff may come to the pickleball um, enthusiasts and organizers and say, you know what, that 120 will take us this far. 
we need another 10,000. We need another 15,000. We, we just don't know that at this mm -hmm. point until we bid it out. So um, I'll just put a, that an asterisk that we don't know how far the 120 is going to go. So that would be part of the reporting that Ray could provide for you. And and we'd be in touch with, um, we, the town staff, would be in touch with the pickleball supporters. There may have to be a little private fundraising that that gets mm -hmm. us over the finish line. Does we it make sense know. to just... Yeah. Does it make sense to just ask for that anyway? Because it seems when we were at that gathering at the park, it seemed like there were that was the ideal with design and fences and you know upgraded equipment and so forth. And then there was the basic. Um, it almost seems to me like it couldn't hurt to raise some money anyway. Is it fair to do that? I I think it is. I think I think we're going to run up into that number sooner than we all would like. So I think okay. if we continue to meet with the pickleball folks and we set a goal and and uh, let let's see what they might be able, willing to contribute. And we're okay. working on the we're working on the infrastructure, the walkways, the 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 the, the bituminous pavement, the lining, you know, the fencing. But what about the pickleball nets and other other associated costs. Right, the and benches. The, yeah, the benches. The shade structure is not included. Right. You know? Um, Matt Kane. Oh, go ahead, Carolyn, are you finished? I was just gonna say, when we got together, we talked about a little creative financing on the part of the town. And you also just mentioned that, that they might be able to take this from the pavement budget, throw this in there. Um, we'd like to encourage that. I don't know if there's anything we can do to you know, it, that's already Amy and I that. already have. Yeah, Amy and I already have that. You know, we'll, you know, she can talk to Guilford, but again, we can't fold other things like we can't fold shade structures into that. We can't right, fold right. nets. We can't fold things like that into to, into that kind of paving contract. Sure. So, this you know, question had come up on our when we went out and stood out there. Um, uh, the the cost relatively minimal looking at the grand scheme of it but the cost of removing the trees that doesn't get lumped into into the uh pickleball cost does it i think likely the tree removal that we can do um with our Sorry. staff yeah. and so that won't add a cost and to be clear we can add the pavement to the contractor that's already coming that's, we can that's add it to means. like the road budget and not put it on the pickleball budget. I just, I want to be clear, we're not adding it to the paving budget and taking away from fixing a street um, okay. yep. as, a, you know, but if we can take advantage of contractors that are already in town and just say, hey, for a change order, since you're already in town, can you just do this little area for us? That's how we did it up at Mill River. That's what um, Dave mentioned it. Though. Yeah, so that's, that's the, yeah, I just want to be clear. <laughs> okay, so that would just be trees and pavement, no other, nothing else would apply. That's good to know. That could help yeah. a lot. Matt Cain. All right. Um, well, I just typed in a motion to propose. Thank if, you. If people are ready for that. I'm, I've been taking some notes of myself. I'd rather it come from you than from me. So, okay. yes. Uh, so, do you, you want to hear from Jonas first or? Yeah, yeah. Jonas, go. Yeah, this is the eleventh hour uh, interjection here. I'm um, just a little background. Um, what's the what's the appetite for pickleball? Clearly, there's appetite in the town. Just, and I guess it gets to my question of. And I think Andrew brought this up a little bit last time. Um, well, actually, maybe it wasn't quite his angle, but wondering about if if these could be constructed without much additional cost to be potentially converted to another use, if say the appetite wanes for pickleball. Um, so um, the history the history of this whole discussion is that uh, $120,000 was approved by the CPA for a proposal um, to build pickleball courts. And okay. the original proposal was uh, some courts at Mill River. And okay. so the $120,000 is approved. Right. And then this is satisfying that CPA request. I see. Already so the, the reason we're voting here is because it's different than the original CPA request. Okay. Great. Thanks. 
So that's two hands. Okay, uh, Matt, would you mind sharing the the proposed motion? Uh, to approve town staff proceeding with the design of two or three pickleball courts at Kiwanis Park in a north-south orientation. Any trees removed should be replaced at Kiwanis Park. You said design, I think I'd add construction too. Okay. Designing construction. Yep. And it, what what you said trees, how about the pavement piece? Do we need to mention that as a separate budget item? I mean, as a not our budget item? Do we? I don't know. No? I don't understand what piece you're talking about. Well, we, um, the things that Amy just said would not be part of the pickleball budget were pavement, possibly pavement and tree removal. And you just mentioned um, tree removal. I, no, I think she did so. say, she said that, well, I, I don't I don't know if we need to, well, she said that that the pavement would be part of the pickleball budget as a change order to another contract. Oh, oh I see. Okay. We're, okay, we're going to try and get the economy of scale of the contractor right. that's already in town. So okay. it'll be less expensive, but I can't roll that into okay. the, the money that's set aside for improving roads, you know, so it has to be okay. out of this budget. Got it. Okay. Sorry yeah. if that was confusing before. No, I'm sure it wasn't, but just to me. All right. I like that, Matt. I think it sounds good. Yeah. Uh, Yusuf, was that your hand? I think is that that piece is kind of under the study part. And maybe we can just say something like, you know, when maximizing the budget based on some of the assets that we can take advantage from the town, like Amy was saying, something to that effect. In other words, the 120,000 is great and whatever we can get for free <laughs> or, or, you know, piggyback uh, benefit on something else would be helpful. Will that matter to the town, Dave? Did you say that again, Yusuf? Uh, just put something in the motion about, you know, to try to maximize the budget using existing assets and other opportunities that are happening in the town during this process. I, I think that's fine. We're gonna we're gonna try to work, and work it out and stretch dollars and yeah. You know. Yeah, I think in general that that is how we do stuff. So if you want to put that in, that's again that that's what we're going to do anyway because we want to get you as much as possible for this dollar amount. Yeah. So I mean, two we, things. As, a, as an example, yeah. I mean, we just did some. DPW was was kind enough to just do some um, drainage work up at the dog park. That you know uh, that was a complicated project on the landfill cap. Uh, we had some money left over in an account for the dog park but not enough to hire contractors. So DPW did the work. We paid X number of thousands of dollars. The town paid X number of thousands of dollars for all the materials. And DPW went in in a day and a half, two days with Jason overseeing it. And we hopefully solved uh, the drainage issue in the, in the big dog area. So that's right. how we try to stretch dollars and make all of our tax dollars go further and get things done. Do you want to put anything into your motion that this is the responsibility of report on direct director on myself? Uh, there's developments, Dave mentioned, you know, to, to have the director be able to report back at the commission meetings and say this is where they are. There's been a slight change or anything like that. Do you do you want to have that? Uh, like, do you, what is what do you want to have commissioned for oversight over this process? Information or oversight? Sounds like Dave said that's kind of part of the process anyway. So I don't okay. think we need to make it okay. part of the motion. Okay. Keep it simple. Okay. So I I added another sentence. The town should use best efforts to use existing raw, oh, should make, I should change it. The town should um, make best efforts to use existing resources. Oh, uh, too many, There's, I'm tripping over the grammar here. To make the pickleball budget go as far as possible. I don't like how many makes and 
best and everything. I'm... Can you just say it should use its best effort to make the pickleball courts as affordable as possible or to keep them within yeah. the budget? Yes. Seems like the simpler, um, the better just because we don't want to chip ourselves over. Dave, it looks like you have a comment. Well, no, I was just going to say, I like what you said, Carolyn, to, to keep to keep the uh, the pickleball budget, to keep the pickleball court construction within budget, recognizing that there may need to be private fundraising. Because I just don't want somebody to look at this four months from now and say, but the town said we could do it all for 120. You know, right. we'll have all been on this meeting, but the, the motion will say something different. So we know this budget is going to be stretched. So why mm -hmm. not acknowledge it in this motion? There's also, this is probably don't, shouldn't be part of this, but let me ask you, I, I think I heard us agree that we could go back to the CPA for additional money, but that wouldn't be till next spring. We can, we can always do that. That's always an option, but I mean, you, you all know the, the timeline on that is proposals go in in the fall. You actually wouldn't, we, the, no one would see that money until July 1 of 2024. Mm -hmm. It's an option, okay. but... I'd love to avoid yeah, that. I could, think all of us would. We had to wait on fences or better nets or something like that. It's a possibility. Yeah. Okay. It's well, always there, but we'll private fund fundraising reasons. would be quicker. Okay. Any other comments okay. about the statement as it stands? So now I have the town should use its best efforts to keep the pickleball courts within budget as far as possible. With the possibility of requiring some private fundraising. Okay. Or with the understanding that some private fundraising may be necessary. That's perfect. Okay, so I think that all we need to do now is to have a motion and a vote. And I know the motion is waiting for the the wordsmith processing to happen here, but okay. I move. Uh, so do, should I should I read it first? You should read the statement before anybody votes. I, I move that uh, we approve town staff proceeding with the design and construction of two or three pickleball courts at Kiwanis Park in a north-south orientation. Any trees removed should be replaced at Kiwanis Park. The town should use its best efforts to keep the pickleball courts within budget as far as possible with the understanding that some private fundraising may be necessary. Does that satisfy uh, Town Hall, David? Yeah, that sounds fine. Is that is that is there anything that we're missing in that? Then um, that was the motion. Is there a second? A second. Uh, motion has been seconded by Carolyn. Uh, I, all in favor? Should I roll call vote or visual? Um, raise of hands. We can see everybody. Raise, right? of, raise of hands. We have everybody on camera. Please raise your hand if you vote affirmative. That is unanimous by the five attendees. Uh, motion passes. Go get them. And so I will be in, in conversation with DPW and Amherst, the town of Amherst engineers with Town Hall about moving forward the next steps in this process. Uh, thank you, Commission. Uh, oh, it's been a long sort of process of having conversations. This, I hope this feels as good to you all as it feels to me that that, that felt like action. Um, so we, it's now our responsibility to follow up and make sure that that, that continues. Uh, any questions, wrap that up. Any questions on, on sort of where we are with that, or can we move on through the agenda? 
as usual, the agenda is situated, yes, and David and Amy are certainly free to stay or go as you wish. I will move you back to the panel. I would do, thank David. you very much. We appreciate it and we will keep you posted. You know, there's a lot of work ahead of all of us. So this is just kind of the beginning of, of trying to really build these, these courts. Um, I will say, I wanna put one plug in for field improvements at the middle school, high school and community field because Really, honestly, 10 years from now, I would love to see that Kiwanis Park is not essential in our field rotation. I, I just, every time I'm out there, I can't believe that field. It's just, it is, um, it is a really rough surface out there. I, you know, I really truly believe we should improve the fields at the middle school, high school and community field and, and not invest hundreds of thousands of dollars in fields, you know, uh, south and, and east. So that's my plug. I'd love to see a new track and a new field of some kind in a in between and in, in the middle of an eight lane track. So we got to keep moving on that and keep working on that. So thanks. Imagine a day where the where the uh, where the high school fields, where the regional fields and uh, a community field are as that drain as well relatively dry like Kiwanis. Kiwanis is popular because it's flat and it's dry, but mm -hmm. that creates this problem. So we do. I I echo Dave's, Dave's uh, sentiment there. Yeah, maybe and, you know a it, big pickleball complex with like twenty five courts there or something. Who knows? I was going to say a pool, but okay. <laughs> this is where we find out 50, where a 50 meter pool <laughs> uh oh i think amy and i have to leave this <laughs> thank, you. thank you very pool. much we gotta leave thank, thank you both <laughs> thanks you guys being here okay the next thing on our agenda pavilions and pools is is denise with us she is okay um, as I bring, as I elevate her to, I'm excited to make the introduction here. I'll bring her on, bring her aboard. Uh, uh, we do try, Carolyn and, sit, Carolyn and I sit down to put the agenda together to think about trying to, there's always stuff at the end that we say we can table if we want to or can turn into something else. So, so we'll try and catch up on our agenda here if, if we can, but if not, then don't be too stressed about the timing. I'm going to bring forward for, uh, to the panel, uh, Denise Leckenby. I was hoping that it would be quick and it would happen right when I said it would be like she punches on the screen right when I said. Um, there she is. So Denise is here. This is the first time I've had a chance to introduce her officially to the uh, commission. Denise is our aquatics coordinator. Uh, she's been a very welcome, did we lose? Oh. Uh, we might have lost Matt in here somewhere. Um, oh, Matt's here. He's a participant now. Yep, I've got him coming up now. Uh, so Denise, Denise came on uh, last spring uh, to take the role of Aquatics Coordinator. And I always like to have somebody other than me come and give some of our program reports anyways, but we are about to reach the really, really transition time into our, our pool seasons here. So I did think this was the perfect opportunity to, to uh, put Denise before you. Um, we have the first, I guess, uh, Denise, do you wanna uh, say anything about yourself and your role in the, the season here? Sure. Um... So I came in last spring with a pitch for a, a rec team for um, third grade through uh, seniors and Ray graciously and warmly um, accepted the interest that I was carrying with me from some of the other swim communities in the area, all oriented around youth sports. Since then, I've started also coaching um, a master's adult group at Hampshire College to try to diversify some of our pool, indoor pool rental situations um, and not keep us tied entirely to arms. Um, and I came on as aquatics coordinator with Ray in, I think, around Halloween. So since then, I've been 
bolstering up and programming with the staff to um, increase the quality of the curriculum for our youth lessons. And now we're getting our outdoor pools underway. So Carolyn's segue with uh, wanting a 50 meter pool in Western Massachusetts <laughs> sings to my ears. Um, and uh, yeah, we're excited to get the outdoor pools going and um, share with you a little bit about what we've been working on this past few months and what we're looking forward to for the summer months. So I can, I can share, I'm looking at our agenda right now and I can share, I, I highlighted Capitol because the pools and Cherry Hill are the two biggest recipients of our, of our capital interest or capital requests. Uh, we don't need to go into all of that uh, necessarily right now, but both of them have been, have been uh, the focus for us in terms of, especially War Memorial has been a concern for us. Uh, that was a CPAC concern that has been uh, capital is less was less the pools right now because CPAC did come back favorably for the for the pool developments. But the uh, um, in terms of our assets, we constantly are talking about managing the assets that the town gives recreation, and those two pools are two of our more profitable assets. Um, so, so we we I, I bring to the commission. Uh, I've spoken to Carolyn about it a few times. I've spoken to, to Denise about it frequently, about trying to find a way to make sure that as we move forward with those two pools and wars is in the is in the weakest shape right now, but that we that we think about structuring uh, uh, potential to build revenue in the future. Um, in terms of our season, uh, we can skip pavilions. Pavilions are opening. I can I can tell you that that's that's all I need to share about that right now. In terms of dates, the pavilions at the parks are going to be open, and those are those are uh, sort of first come first serve um, on schedules through the department. But uh, I wanted Denise here particularly to share with us uh, sort of the the opening schedules. Uh, ideas about about uh you know sort of what the season brings to us and any sort of new or returned activities that are going on this summer spring and summer yep um so i kind of felt like this and this could be me as a parent of young people um but i feel like this summer is the first summer we're going to feel like we are post COVID, even if our practices are still somewhat safe. And um, I certainly know that as a person who managed a large swim team through shutdown, that the pools were a super safe place to exercise. But in terms of capacity and modeling of our pool schedules, both at Mill and at War, I really returned um, kind of dialed back the clock and uh, to think about what was going well in 2019 um, rather than looking back to 2022 or 2021 which I think should not have they just weren't valid models for how I thought the pools could be both staffed and how we could think about who can be in that space the happy thing for the past three years is COVID and chlorine do not enjoy one another so those of us who are swimmers, we, we felt really confident and safe um, experiencing that as our exercise outlet and outdoors even better. Um, Carolyn and I met um, a number of weeks ago and had a great chat about my brainstorms about the pool usage. Um, and she shared with me in her community outreach uh, some of the perspectives on how we allocate the time. So I see my role as Number one, balancing the person that I am, which is a lap swimmer, um, as well as thinking about the youth um, programming that we've already had underway this winter at ARMS, but we need to continue that. We think about the camp, um, the camp usage. And so we're working with a variety of camps, not just embedded in the rec department uh, to make sure that the open swims are available to them. And then youth lessons, which 
in my other life, I'm also in public health and um, having a community of swimmers at all ages is a public health necessity. Um, so making sure that there's access for those lesson times with strong staff and a great curriculum um, is kind of like it's where my heart lives and it's what I think my mandate is in, um, in my capacity as aquatics coordinator. So predominantly I've shifted um, for some of Carolyn's recommendations and also gathering feedback from some of my swimmers that swim with me or I, I swim with. Um, predominantly we're, we're really moving things back to that 2019 model where war is carrying a lot of the open swim weight. That will be the pool where the lifeguards um, are gonna be putting band-aids on and, and telling people not to run. Um, there will be some lessons at Mill River, but overall Mill River is gonna see a lot more of the lap swim time. Um, and you know we're kind of making shifts and moves as people come to us and say, hey, we'd like to bring 15 to 20 kids from our camp in over the course of this two and a half hour block um, to accommodate them and make sure that I'm covering the staff situation in a appropriate and safe way. Um, and then my other intention that some of you probably haven't had a chance to take a look at is like, we're trying to update the website and make things really clear on when, when's lap swim at this place and when's open swim available to me. And, um, so that people throughout the summer can go to find the information that they need from us, um, as well as turning my staff to be a little more, um, public facing, um, I think we've had a really great experience this uh, winter and spring with some really lovely lifeguards and swimmers who are teaching the kids how to how to be in the water. And I'm hoping to carry that work ethic into what happens at Mill and War. Um, so I've got a great crop of wonderful young people who are going to be working for me this summer. Outstanding. Uh, uh, you already mentioned, when I, when I mentioned expansion, I, you already mentioned about expanding our programs. Amherst United, of course, is now very much a, a it's one of us. It's not, it's not a test case. It's a, it's a rec program. And the master's swim program was, I think, a, it's moving in that same direction. Um, we have talked about bringing back movies at the pool, this summer, we talked about trying to make the pools if highlight that same energy about sort of sort of we're back to to pools being what the pool should be. Trying to make sure we sort of bottle that energy and keep that uh, at the at the pools the way they need to be. And so things like the moving out of the pool is is uh, one of my favorite parts of of the brainstorming process. We are back in a partnership with the Survival Center. Um, to provide access. So part of this is some community outreach also to provide access for the survival center to, to uh, uh, provide free passes to, to uh, survival center users. Um, and so we saw a number of, of passes redeemed at the, at the uh, pools last summer. We anticipate it'll probably be roughly the same rate this year which we've enjoyed that they've, they've reached out for us. We, you know, I, I really appreciate their uh, support. And so that's, that's part of, that's another piece of what we, what we think the role of the pool is beyond trying to juggle all the interests that are, we know are inside of our walls. Sanjay. Thanks, Ray. And thanks, Denise, for the updates on swimming. I want to just ask about something you said in perhaps a slightly offhand way in the introduction, Ray. You mentioned that the pools were one of the most profitable uh, segments of the Amherst Rec portfolio, and uh, I just wanted I, I wanted to ask whether they are they profitable or are they the largest revenue generators? Revenue generators. <laughs> okay. Thank you, you uh, Sanjay. You actually you actually corrected me on my first meeting on that exact same thing. Okay. <laughs> so I've. I clearly have not come that far. <laughs> as, as, soon, as 
as soon as you raised your hand and started started saying that, I said, I think I know where this is going. Yes, I, uh, you're correct. <laughs> okay, and I actually don't recall having done that to you before. Um, to be clear, I raised that point not because I object to, not because <laughs> oh, I think that yes. recreation programs should be profitable, right? But yes. rather that I I think Amherst Rec should uh, we, Amherst Rec should generate revenue, right? Period. Um, but I think when we use the word profit maybe slightly offhandedly it can it can lead to misunderstandings that get then gives people ammunition to pick at other programs that are um thank you yeah that i mean that don't break even but to even use that phrase i mean break even is not the goal mm -hmm. of a recreation department so thank you correct <laughs> uh sanjay you are correct uh you if if that was your way of auditioning for the next chair role, then I, <laughs> I, I, I no, I I do appreciate that. That uh, I misspoke. What I did mean was uh, revenue producer. Thank you. Uh -huh. And so, uh, any questions, comments, observations for Denise in the pools? Um, I have a question. Yes. Hi, hi Denise. Um, it was a great presentation. Um, there you are seeing a good um amount of interest in lifeguarding now uh, i was is that that's good news if that's true i am and i'm uh some of this could just be the web of high school age swim swimmers that i know i i was the high school coach for amherst this past year um so this feels a little bit like an extension of my mentorship relationship with them that this is you know, their, their new first job. Um, and this is a, a great one for them. So I'm excited for the, the crowd that's returning from last summer and then the, the upswell of interest in newcomers as in addition. Um, yeah, yeah I'd, it's, I'd, I'm excited. Yeah, I'd heard there were shortages, I don't know, in past years. So I think you have a uh, I, I certainly mm -hmm. felt the impact of the shortages this winter. It, right. It's hard hard during the school year to have a, a solid uh, rotation of, of folks to teach lessons on weeknights and weekends, but summertime is opening up, which feels really good. Yeah. And Sanjay, similar, like I really appreciate your profitability versus revenue generating. And, you know, that's something I've been really mindful with. Um, pools are extremely expensive. I mean, whether it's the hour to rent it, uh, the upkeep. Um, so I think that while I'm new in the position, I'm well-versed in how much even just running the United rec team costs um, and working with Jose and Ray to make sure that even though the pool costs are expensive that we, and now we are as a swim team generating some, some revenue we're folding that big back in to um, as best we can, folding that back into the whole rec community so that swimming isn't this separate thing. Like we're, my aim is to have a really strong rec swim program that supports soccer, supports basketball. We all pitch in and fundraise in, in similar manners so that our kids are one community and the financial streams are one community, whereas rec swimming in Amherst for 40 years lived in its own little bubble. Um, and I'm really excited that we get to do this underneath the rec umbrella um, for all athletes, not just swim athletes. We're lucky to have you, Denise. Oh, thank you for saying that, Carolyn. I'm happy to be here. Great. Uh, why don't we let Matt go and I'll follow, I'll come after him. Matt. Um, yeah, sounds great, Denise. Sounds like you're really uh, getting, getting yeah, your hands all over this problem. <laughs> this is great. Um, I'm not sure exactly what the commission is asked to provide here. Um, are we just, I mean, obviously it's nice to hear this stuff, but um, do you want ideas? Um, uh, do you want, is there, is there some kind of cap? There was in the agenda something about capital. Haven't heard anything about that. Um, yeah, uh, what do you ask? What do you want from us? 
I don't I don't know that there is an ask. This was more of a for me, this was more of a uh, program report. And it is an ask for okay. the commission to invest in something right now for us. When I mentioned the capital, I was going to uh, uh, you know, look at trying to update where we were on the you uh, through CPAC. You have, obviously you know the 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 uh, risk that the pools had in renovating War Memorial and and, and renovating the space that they have. Uh, this was not a request for the for okay. a commission uh, a, a subcommittee from the commission to pursue, like we've talked about with pickleball, or like we've talked about okay. with or what have you okay the, the, i do have a i do actually do have a question um what is the sort of the utilization is is the utilization like really high like we don't have enough full space to fit all of our programs or is the utilization like well we have these lifeguards sitting there and there's only one person in the pool I can I can say that there is that, that we are trying to juggle a lot of different interests. Denise kind of mentioned it there for uh, in her presentation that um, you know the, the the culture clash between folks that are splashing water and play and folks that are lap swim folks. Everybody wants time inside. Folks that have long access to the pools and people who are. We're one of the few towns where every town doesn't have accessible outdoor pools. And so we have people come to us from other towns that sometimes make the traffic a little bit more uh, provided free, uh, some a couple of free days last summer because it got to be blistering hot. And so that also brings more people to the pools. Technically, this isn't under Denise's purview, but technically the splash pad is also operated through by DPW with with our with our uh, cooperation. And so there are a lot of people that have designs on time at the pools. Uh, Denise, I think is in her first run through this has done a remarkable job of of juggling those and trying to make sure that there's time and space for everybody to be happy and everybody to feel like they're giving something. And I think she's built a schedule that's filled with compromise. Uh, okay. Well, maybe I can ask Denise some more specific question. Are the lessons full? Uh, they are approaching full for the month of June. Folks are not yet planning. I mean, I they're they're filling throughout the summer, but full, June is filling. Yes. And then um, your comment about like, I, I guess you just have because you've only been in the position since you weren't in the position last year, right? No, this was my first summer. So, so so your plan when you, your comment about planning on 2019 versus 20 that's your terms that you, you you what you what you're referring to is like how many lifeguards you're going to put out there and like yeah. what what you're going to do for lap swim. So in 2019, is your understanding that um, the open swim and the lap swim were fairly well utilized? That's my understanding. Um, Marion, Ray, and I have been working on gathering data, which is my other big to-do list for this summer, to truly see, to capture the data of who's using the pool when. Um, and you are, get that just by someone, someone, someone just marks when they answer. Yeah, I, I, we're going to have a swipe, the swipe cards and the memberships versus the drop-in swims at 10 a.m. versus 2 p.m. Like I'm going to gather that data this summer so that we can truly utilize the pools in 2024 in a manner that fits the community's need. So right now I've used 2019 as my best model for how we should allocate the pool between open swim, lap swim, team swim, lessons. Okay. Um, and we're gonna gather that data through, the, through a, diff, a new system this summer. And we've never had that data before. No, that, I, it's not available to me. Yeah. Yusuf. Okay. So given all the activities that you're juggling through the pools, where do you think, what do you think is the best way to generate more revenue to help out all of the other things that 
are happening in rec? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a balance. Um, I th I'll be interested to see how what the numbers truly l land upon. Um, I know the passion of the lap swimming community. Um, is that where the financial support rises up to? Where you know, while we're our overarching aim is always to keep this financially accessible to every family, regardless of their ability. Um, to swipe that card, um, is it the lap swimmers who value that hour swim versus a family member who need who wants to come and have open swim accessible? Like, where does that come, and who does it tax most heavily? So, if we're thinking about free and reduced lunch families, making sure that that's still part of our community, we think about access as well in terms of not just Amherst residents, but um, you know, children from out of town who may not have lessons access in their, or lessons offered in their community that we are here to provide that for them as well. Um, you know, I don't have the data on where the, the revenue stream is gonna be strongest. And then the discussion for, I think, that I'll hopefully be sitting with you all in September about is to present that data and to say, as a rec community, a rec-minded community, what is our mission? Like, public health-wise, I know where my mission would lie in terms of increasing access, increasing water safe, a water-safe community, and the best way to do that may conflict with our revenue stream, but that's a mission vision question that we can have when we have this data. Um, while also supporting the needs and asks of the, the taxpaying community of the town of Amherst, who has these valuable assets. The pools, pools are in Western Mass are far and few between. It's hard to run a swim team. It's hard to find lap swim hours. And during the summer months, Amherst can do it. So I'm going to try to do it as well as I can. Thanks. Before I turn it over, I know Sanjay had a question he wanted to ask out here also. Um, um, in response to sort of what the commission can do here, I think one of the reasons why this is useful for me in presenting to the commission, uh, I'm pretty certain it was Matt that actually asked the question in CPAC, which was the reason why we started talking about data-driven uh, support for the pools here. But we were asked in the CPA uh, proposals, uh, you know, uh, do we need two pools? Uh, what is what is the need for for our having two pools? Do we should we be looking at at reducing? Is it is it cost worthy to reduce and move down to one pool? Do we is it does it cost too much to operate these two? And so my my immediate automatic response to the question was. Of course, we want the two. We want three pools. We'd rather have three than one. Um, uh, you know, but but then I, I I'm telling myself through the answer to the question and following. And I was talking to my staff. I'm I'm saying that, that we need to gather some data to to make sure that we know if the question is what what is the use of our assets, then we want to have that information available. Uh, in case that question, I've had that question a few times. It's not like that was the first time. It wasn't the last time that we've been asked sort of that question about how, what do we value about the, the spaces that we operate right now? And so I think that's an approach to answering that question that helps the commission if, if the question becomes more pointed than, than sort of a response to our, our proposal or, or just a spitball, a, a forward-minded spitball by town manager or Dave Zomek, or if somebody is asking us, what do you think about about you know the the use of these pools? I think that helps us answer that question in a way that's honest and supports what we think is the vision for recreation. Sanjay, thanks, Ray. Um, this is I'll sort of address this at Denise, but it really will turn into a broader question about youth sports and Amherst Rec. Um, I'm I don't know much about swimming. <laughs> We're not a swim family. But I'm pretty interested in lots of different youth sports, as most of the people here know, and as Ray definitely knows. <laughs> um, 
it sounds like there's a new swim team in town operated by you, Denise, and by Amherst Recreation Department. So I'm seeing nodding. That sounds great. <laughs> yep. Two yes. thumbs up from a, from a non-swimmer. Two thumbs up. Um, you referred to it as the rec team. And I'm aware that rec is often code for the not very good team. And I wonder if Amherst Rec, as it you know, continues to offer competitive programs and may even offer more competitive programs, could think about a way of identifying the teams that does not carry the Rec tag. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I'd, I'd be interested in comments about whether my observation is correct about the use of the Rec tag with respect to swimming specifically or more generally. And then second, and maybe it doesn't have to be tonight, we're already over an hour and a half, but at some point, like, so what, what are our teams? Are they the junior hurricanes? Are, what, are, what are they? So, so from my, I'll stay in my lane, um, literal swim lane here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Carolyn can get that one too. Um, so I don't feel, um, I feel pretty intensely committed to the fact that rec swimming is not the not so great swimming. Um, we are number one, our programming is committed to the belief that swimming can be a mind body connection that kid, the kids may not be able to find in a club or travel swim environment, which would be the if we were going to label things, that would be like USA swimming. Um, mental health being a key component of what we can offer in a rec environment where the aggressive, aggressive com competitive achievement time oriented focus on swimming is tends to be the club scene in New England swimming and USA swimming. Um, we have kids on the team that are neurodivergent. We have kids on the team who are coming to us and saying, we've never been welcomed in an athletic environment. And this is our first experience where we feel safe and happy. And that's all that I want from this team. So it's it may not be achievement oriented in the way that the good team, the, the varsity team is, the travel team is, um, but we're providing space and time and a physical outlet that in some ways is the perfect foil to the screen that the kids experience all day long. Um, some of this you'll hear my passion on just how much I love swimming, um, but I think that that mission and vision for all rec sports, for all youth is what I hope to be a part of. Um, and I hope we're changing the perspective within Amherst United that we're not the the not so good team. I think that we're building something that's really lovely. Carolyn response. Well just, just yeah just in response to you know the the rec um reputation kind of that we all have from our past. I am always confused by the names of our swim teams. Is this Amherst United that you're talking about? Yes. This rec team? Okay, so if we were to call it Amherst United, it, no one would think of it as a lesser team. So maybe we just need to drop that rec piece. Can we do that? I mean, would that, would that satisfy Sanjay, the kind of reputation for rec that you're, you're thinking about? Well, and Jonas, I don't mean to cut you off here. If you want to take your turn, go ahead. Well, I'm just, I'm just wondering, um, is this going to be, Denise, will this be a rec league? So you will be quote unquote competing? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Maybe so we're already, rec? we're part of the Western Mass Swim League that's okay. 40 that, or 50 years old. Yeah. Okay. We're, we're part of that. that that's not designated as rec, is it? I mean, maybe people- No, no, there's YMCAs and not everyone is affiliated with a specific town. There are private teams that yeah. join, there are town teams that join, but it's- So if, 
Carolyn, uh, um, I'll try to respond to you. I think the, like, the short answer is yes. Like to me, like Amherst United, that sounds like a pretty cool name. <laughs> Sign me up. Yeah, could um, be big. Uh, you know, I can just speak from my experience running baseball and skiing to some extent in town. Essentially the first question I get from anyone who doesn't know what we do is, oh, are you a travel program? And I like hate that question more than I can even express in words. What, like, why, 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 why is there this um, unnecessary imposition of a hierarchy on youth sports mm -hmm. where the the good sports are the ones that involve hours of driving around the state and region on weeknights. And the less good sports, the less good teams are the ones that are run by rec departments. It's, it's nonsense and it's destructive, in my opinion, to children and to families. So the, the short answer, Carolyn, is yeah, I think Amherst United is a great name for a swim team. And we should call it that as much as possible. The bigger question I think that I was trying to pose is whether Amher whether the Amherst Recreation Department might uh, come up with a, a uniform, I hesitate to use this word, but you know where I'm headed, branding yeah. <laughs> for its teams, right? That would, uh, that would participate in the casting aside of this unnecessary and destructive hierarchy of youth sports organizations. And I, I will now take off my pontification hat and be quiet for a little while. AJ, we always appreciate the pontification. <laughs> um, the uh, I can I know I want to try and be respectful of time here. I think I, there are a couple of of angles in that I want to share. Uh, number one is is uh, uh, you know my I, I coach all a lacrosse team. Uh, Fifth, fifth and sixth grade lacrosse team, third and fourth grade lacrosse team. I have girls lacrosse right now, as you all mostly know. Um, uh, and he's definitely knows I coach her daughter. We let them, both my years, we let them choose their own name. We let them choose their own team name. They don't have to be the junior hurricanes or whatever. And so a lot of energy goes into kids at the youth level trying to brand themselves, to give themselves an identity and give themselves a give themselves a name and identify this is my team and we voted on this. And so we turn it into what we do. They, as soon as we started a new year, they said, are we gonna vote for a new name this year? And they they chose a new name. We are the Amherst, Ar we are the Amherst Arvarks. Uh, I don't know what Arvarks do or what sound they make, but we're gonna explore that and research it. Uh, so there is some creativity. I don't, I would try and there's so much independence among our different sports teams in the first place to force each of the teams to become something that's external i think that there's a power for youth in creating their own their own sort of identity and i i will say that uh i'm with sanjay on the on the hierarchies and the frustration i heard the frustration there uh maybe the only place where we hear it more than baseball would be basketball uh where the where the tearing off of rec versus travel sort of stuff comes in but baseball has a legend has a, a not just here all over the place has this hierarchy of rec rec means lesser um yeah but I, it's there but it's there in soccer it, i know it's there in soccer it's there we right. know those that those hierarchies exist i will tell you that without doing the research first uh we aren't putting the rec label on on swimming. I think in my interactions with Denise, my interactions with swimmers, that's not a badge of dishonor. They 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 refer to themselves as rec in a way that it like that that hierarchy hasn't come in and 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 corrupted that for them. Maybe because there isn't like a, a simple choice there that we offer a traveling team in a, in a rec program and maybe the newness of it. I think that is worth, I think the feedback is worthwhile for us to make sure we tiptoe and avoid people, you know, sort of sort of stepping into the, oh, well, this isn't serious or this isn't, this isn't uh, something that we want to do here. But uh, I've always been leery and I've 
and probably going way well outside of sport into like like my own life issues but i've always been leery of a of a zoom room full of people that aren't me determining what i should call myself <laughs> uh of adults from another from that that are thinking about what it might mean externally or what it might look like and what it might sound like for the labels that that i embrace and choose if if this was something that that Amherst United AU is gold. If Am if so this is something that Amherst United uh, is just refers to them shorthand as Rec all the time. We did rebrand ourselves as Rec the Rec Department, and so I think that's also part of the reason why we do it. And I haven't thought to you know haven't had a second thought about it. Um, but if it's if it's something that it was put on them and they're like oh, I don't like this Rec thing, I feel like it's lesser, then we should be changing it immediately. But if it's something that that is embraced by the group, I don't want to force them to to be self conscious about a label that they've chosen for themselves. Don't see as a badge of dishonor. I haven't sensed Denise could certainly respond to it, but I haven't sensed that they that they view it as a tiering of of uh, their ability or comparison to others no and because so we're afforded we we can so number one the hierarchy piece lands on solid you're i'm hearing you and feeling you sanjay for sure the sports industrial complex and the pipelines of youth athletics and usa swimming is really uh it's hard to challenge the machinery of what and how United States swimming prowess occurs on a global scale. It takes the pyramid that has been built within USA swimming and to carve back, at least in New England and Western Mass, strength in town based, community based. Like I love that Jonas put community team, community based swimming that is participatory, that is encouraged, that is open to all, and not necessarily be part of that pipeline is really important to me. And I am the mom of two swimmers who may or may not end up in some capacity swimming long, long, I mean, I'm a product of USA Swimming. So it's a, it's a troubled relationship. Um, I think the branding is important. I think my, the clarity and care with which I've tried to write the statements about the mission for our team and Amherst United, the title, the name was chosen by our kids. It's like a community decision that we're multi, multiple towns feed into the Amherst pools and we're united. Um, yeah, we're, it, I mean, again, I could go on and on, but I, I think this conversation um, is a meaningful one for all of us about what we want to support when it comes to competition in a community-based athletic environment. John, I, I, admire, I admire the way you described the, the openness of the program and the way you've now described the use of the term united. And I <laughs> like, it's none of my business. I'm not even a swim family, but like, what if you could serve all those kids and you could beat the Tritons? Right? <laughs> I know that's now going to well, be on the absolutely. public record and there are going to be some people angry at me, but. No, 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 <laughs> we're, we're, we're a recovering Triton's family, but it's more about creating a healthier environment. I understand. And, I, and I'm really, the other piece I want to say to the Red Commission is that be long, as now belonging and having started a team that is part of the Amherst town and the rec community means that this rec opportunity for swim can never be taken away from the kids of Amherst. Whether I'm there or some other coaches here, like this is, I wanna make sure this is embedded in the opportunities that kids have in Amherst for 20, 30 years from now, as opposed to a standalone entity that can be carried towards one direction or another. So yeah, we're, we're, it's a happy, it's a happy crowd. I can report that. <laughs> well, thank you again, Denise. Um, I am going to 
whirlwind through the last. I, I know we're well over the time here. I'm going to whip through the end. Uh, uh, if there are any questions about our aquatics offerings, about our aquatic season, if there's any ideas that anybody has about working with Denise, working with Carolyn, of course, Carolyn is is coming to the end of her term here on commission. But if you're if we're looking for people who have ideas about how to best uh, maximize our resources in aquatics, please bring them up uh, with myself or Denise. Uh, reach out. We're looking for ideas. We're looking for people to to task themselves into our lives, please. Um, thank you, Denise. And so I'm going to, Denise, I'm going to put you on the panel. You can come or go there. Nobody will know. I mean, we'll put you off the panel. Wait, where am I? Panelists. Um, and so I can, I, like I said, it is important for me. We're not the school committee. We don't need to be here for five hours. Um, <laughs> the uh, I, next the agenda was July 4th. I will tell you that uh, Aaron and myself are going over to UMass to on the first Wednesday of June. They had to get through their graduation season. We have, the, I told you last time, we have the date. We have all of our, our nuts and bolts are in place. We are, we just sent out math. We, we mass sent the mailings, uh, sponsorship letters, uh, requests to the community. So those have gone out and we're going to be following up to try and, to try and draw in some of the, the sponsorships here this week. Uh, but all of the planning is going to be going on. Uh, the planning has already happened. But the but putting sitting down with UMass, our host for the event, is going to be going on in about a week. We are putting together uh, those those things. If anybody here know, I know I've I've always sort of said if anybody is willing to volunteer, you can certainly reach out to us. Uh, uh, Haley Bolton, the the director of the senior center, is is our coordinator of volunteers. If anybody wants to volunteer, you can certainly reach out to me or specifically to her. Um, but more, more so commission, if you know people who are looking for volunteer opportunities, if you know anybody, if you have, if you have uh, uh, networks of folks that you can reach out to and uh, drop the need could be variety. You could have a variety of different needs. But if you know people who might be interested in, in volunteering, uh, please send them my way or to Haley Bolton at the Senior Center. Um, you know, I think I can I can wrap that up by just saying I, I am pretty encouraged that this is going to be a pretty good event. Um, the the seven o'clock agenda item was rec commission, which I will turn over to Carolyn really quickly. We intentionally put, left this at the end because it is our little homework worksheet sort of thing. But uh, I like the way we're moving towards a commission uh, that, that can take on projects or start to steer some of our, the philosophy of how we're doing things, but especially looking at our resources and looking at the voice that we have been empowered with in, in town as, as sort of the, the arbiters of all things, of all recreation uh, facilities and property. Carolyn, would you like to jump in? Um, all I would add is that, and maybe I'm you know, leaving out some stuff that you wanted to include, but it, I think the mission statement will help us, once we get that done, will help us understand why we're here, why each of us is here, what we bring to it, um, you know, and what's needed. I'm only starting to understand that with this pickleball project. And then for that reason, I encourage anyone to get involved in a pet project because you learn so much about the way the town works. And I didn't have a clue. Um, so anyway, Jean did do uh, a draft of the mission statement and um, Ray and I took a look at it and uh, it was a really good start. It just kind of explains um, that we're here for the kids mostly. Um, in the community. Uh, we also wanted to add a little bit about um, that we're you know, being an advisory board for Ray and for the department. So we're still working on that. We're not gonna cover it tonight. Um, we'll probably bring it up again in June 
at, um, you know, before the end of this meeting, which should be any minute now, I think, we need to decide what we're doing for, in June. We talked about getting together outdoors somewhere, um, see if everyone's interested in that. And if so, what, when, where? So I guess that just brings us to whether is there, if there's any new business things we didn't cover that somebody else has no, on, on their minds. Absence of new business, um, it will be Yusuf and Carolyn's last commission meeting in June. Um, as Carolyn just said, we had kind of floated the idea of meeting in person, uh, of sitting down someplace, going to one of our gorgeous uh, facilities someplace, going sitting on the deck at Cherry Hill or going out to, to sit in the pavilions in one of the places and sort of having a, a one in-person meeting there before they leave. Uh, um, I am certainly open to that. I can throw out dates right now. I, we are late in May right now, so I think we should probably give ourselves, it push us right on the verge of July 4th, but if we want to do like the, the last or second to last week of June, I think that would make sense. What's that, Monday? Looking at my calendar. June, the last Monday is the 26th of June. Um, For me, anyone else? I can do it. Sixth. Is there anybody who is uh, averse to meeting in person? I'm okay with it. I just won't be here that week. Oh, you won't be here that week? Yes, yeah, family vacation, so. Got it. You all can come you... to the Long, Long Beach Island if you want. <laughs> <laughs> we do. <laughs> do you want to look at the 19th instead? I'm away that week. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to contort. Yeah, the first, the for your first option. Go yeah. Go okay. The twenty sixth. last uh, meeting. Then. We we don't want to cut Yusuf out of his last meeting. Um, <laughs> so we will we will hold for Monday the twenty sixth of June. Um. Uh, does anybody want to move for a site, or does anybody want to move that we that we select a uh, a site at a later date. I think it'd be nice to just decide on a site now if we can all agree on something. Excellent. Um, I guess, you know, as far as weather goes, we're covered either way where? Can we be covered either way at Cherry Hill, indoors or out? We could certainly meet inside at Cherry if it's raining and we're inside, then the there probably won't be uh, bothering too many people if it's raining, but it's but uh, the pavilion at Mill could be an option. Mm -hmm. Why don't? How about doing planning for Cherry Hill, and if it's a rain date, we go to the pavilion at, at Mill River. Right. That's a great idea. Perfect. So the the deck the deck at uh, at Cherry Hill, okay, and that'll be set up. Whatever. Um, do they sell? food or should we bring food or should we skip food or what do you want to do about that they sell beer and wine we can bring a pizza good enough we're done <laughs> <laughs> and so we could bring yeah we could bring everyone bring their own snack bring a snack to share i mean who has an opinion on that no pizza delivered we can that I, sounds good i could i could order pizza great lovely like it okay Seven right. or six. So, I say six. Anybody else? Since we're eating. Okay with you, Matt? Okay. Sanjay? Yep, that's good. Okay. There's a there's a there's some chance that there will be a tournament baseball game that night, but there's no reason I can't know that until just before. So we should go ahead. Okay. Okay. You can come watch the baseball game if there is one. Is it a mill? It would be. And you can come eat pizza while you're coaching or whatever you're doing. 
that, that would be a pretty cool consideration. <laughs> come on, we can come out and heckle you. Okay, so uh, I guess we just that uh, goes goes in the minutes and in the announcement for next time around. Um, we have new members coming or not? Anybody new on the on the wait list or wait, getting in? Not yet, but I do have some meetings held. I have some meeting okay. times held for interviews. Okay. All right. So June 26, 6 o'clock at Cherry Hill Deck, unless it's raining, in which case we go to Mill River Pavilion. Perfect. And watch Sanjay play in the rain. Okay. Sounds good. I will be in touch. Anybody uh, uh, want to meet or reach out? Just, just uh, you know how to get a hold of me. Thanks, everybody. Okay. All right. Meeting adjourned. Yeah. Good night. Good night.